first, it's hard not to feel sorry for Kayla Minane, the now suspended General Secretary of the New South Wales Labor Party, but there's something very rotten with the New South Wales Labor culture when its first instinct is to take the money and then ask how to get around the rules later. We're talking about $100,000 here, I might add. I mean, who deals in large amounts of cash these days anyway? Sure, pay for your coffee with a bit of cash. Maybe have something there for the taxi if the reader isn't working. <laughs> You're right. Pay cash when you're splitting the bill at a restaurant. But we all know when the plumber asks you to pay in cash, it's as dodgy as hell. And make no mistake, Kayla Minane knew it was dodgy, especially once she was told by a sweaty, nervous New South Wales Upper House MP called Ernest Wong that the cash donation, supposed to have come from a Chinese supporters event, was actually all $100,000 of it from the Chinese billionaire now banned from re-entering Australia, Mr Huang Jumo. Now, to her credit, up to a point, Mernane asked her State Secretary predecessor, former Senator Sam Dastian Dastiari, what she should do. The fact that Dastiari met her in his car behind Parliament House tells you everything. I mean, that's the equivalent of going for a walk in a park, Soviet spy style, when you know the office is bugged and the subject matter is dynamite. Dastiari should have told her to give the money back then and there, and he should have told her to report it to the Electoral Commission. But no, like all morally challenged people these days, he told her to talk to lawyers. But please, as a lawyer myself, let me read you the play here. You talk to the lawyers when you know something's wrong, but you want an excuse to go ahead anyway. Real questions are being asked tonight about the conduct of the lawyer. And they should be asked. In evidence to the New South Wales Anti-Corruption Commission, Menane said that the lawyer told her, quote, there is no need to do anything from here. Don't record this meeting. Don't put it in your diary. Forget the conversation ever happened. And I won't be billing you for this either. Of course, we don't know the lawyer's side of all of this yet. And maybe he'll say that this was all Menane's fault or the evidence is false. But whichever way you look at it, this is a political outfit that wanted to take the money rather than obey the law. Now, you could say that all of this is the result of overly fastidious rules about who can donate to political parties, and maybe, maybe property developers and publicans should be able to donate, given that they're perfectly legal businesses, and why should we assume that one class of person can't be trusted to donate when everyone else can, but right or wrong, the law is the law and political parties have to operate inside the rules like all of us. When the parties that form the governments that make the laws don't actually obey them, you can hardly blame the voters when they conclude the whole system is crook. Is it crook? I've been inside the system for 16 years. I don't believe fundamentally it is crook. I still believe that most of the time, most of the people in our parliaments on both sides of the fence are striving to do the right thing, not the wrong thing. But when people just pocket piles of cash, it tends to confirm everyone's worst fears. I mean, if someone gave you $100,000 in cash, you'd know it wasn't right. And the Labor Party boss lady should have known that too. How far does this all go? Well, who else is implicated? Was it established practice in Labor's head office going back years? If so, it will bring more than just Manane down. Have a look at the names of some of the people who have held her job as General Secretary and then used it to springboard themselves into Parliament. The leader, Anthony Albanese, well, he's a creature of the New South Wales Party. Is he worried about what this scandal might do to his own reputation and on other states, are they using this Labor model or are they clean? I bet if she could go back to that night all over again, Kayla Minane would do things differently. Her gut at the time told her it was dodgy enough to seek counsel. Now, sadly for her, she listened to Sam Dastiari rather than her own conscience, as she and the Labor Party are now discovering to their great cost.